Hi guys, this is Greg coming at you with something a little bit different. I'm going to do my first uh, Transformers review for my channel. I wasn't originally going to do one of these when I started the channel, but I decided, eh, why the hell not? The other day, actually over the past couple days, I've been going through a bunch of my old stuff. Some of it I'm throwing out, some of it I'm going to put up at a yard sale. And one of the things I went through was my Transformers. And as a kid, I absolutely loved them, then I got out of them for a while. And in doing so, I missed a whole bunch of really good stuff. I missed the classics line. I missed uh, a lot of the movie lines. I know a lot of people hate them, but I, I love that aesthetic. I, I mean, I know a lot of people hate the movies because of what Michael Bay did, but a lot of people hate the toys as well, which I don't really get. But what people obviously love is G1. And before I get into this, I'm going to start by saying... I am not obsessed with G1, okay. I'm one of the outliers who does not think that every single Transformers medium should be a carbon copy of G1, and that's partly because I'm a Beast Wars era kid, but I have gotten into G1, I really like it, but at the same time, I respect people for trying to make each line its own line, each story its own story, without being a slavish copy. That said, G1's where it all started. It gave us a lot of things to work with, such as this guy. This is Astro Train. Astro Train is lovely. He is one of the first triple changers, along with Blitzwing, both of whom are Decepticons. Uh, I picked this guy up at, I think it was the Odessa Crafts Fair or something like that. I don't remember now. I think that was it. And he was almost complete. He didn't come with his gun, unfortunately, but he came with everything else. Uh, he's still in fairly nice condition. He's got a few floppy joints. He's got some crummy stickers. But for the most part, he's in good shape. He's got the uh, good old rub sign that shows you he is a Decepticon. But apparently my fingers are too fucking cold to make it work. Oh, well. Not really beside the point. Now, this Astro Train in what I think is the best of his modes. I think his Space Shuttle mode is just the best out of them, and it, it's got a couple of flaws, but it really does look the best. It's the one he certainly made the most use out of, especially since he was basically the Decepticon's boss a lot of the time, especially in the in the G1 movie, which is an interesting use of the character. And the Space Shuttle mode is really, uh, it's the better of the two vehicle modes on his Classics Update toy, and I think it's the best of his modes on this toy. Now, it's got a couple of obvious things. It's got this big gap along the top that plays into the other modes. It's got some detailing along various parts of it that you can tell is not from a space shuttle. But for the most part, it looks like a really good space shuttle. And while these flaps along the wings here are kind of loose on mine, they are still tight enough that they can actually hold their pose. I mean... Even if I flop them a little bit, they're not too, too bad, and the rest of it is nice, tight joints. But, of course, he is one of the first two triple changers, like I said, and his other vehicle mode is a type of Japanese steam engine whose exact model number escapes me, and that's really embarrassing because I was a train guy as a kid. I had a lot of interest as a kid, but that's for another video entirely, the one my therapist helps me make. Anyway... We're going to transform this guy into his second vehicle mode. If I keep bringing this guy off camera, I apologize because I'm using my webcam and I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm doing and look at what I'm recording at the same time. Anyway, let's get this guy transformed. So the first thing we want to do is flip him upside down. And if you pay attention to him transforming from steam engine to shuttle in the movie, he literally flips upside down. Bet the Decepticons really enjoyed that, eh? We take his fin, fold it up. His two wings fold down along the body, and they click into place really tightly. You fold these two fins up along the bottom. Mine don't like to stay. That's where the looseness comes in. They're, they're, they're fine for the shuttle mode. They're, they're fine like this. But as soon as you try and fold them like this, they won't do it. C'est la vie. You take the sides here, and you flip them down. Actually, I suppose before you do that, since it would make it inaccessible, you open up these panels here. 
you flip the nose cone of the shuttle in, and it's a little bit tight. You can see right there. Put these back in. Now! Really? You're going to do this to me? Okay, I've not got it in all the way. That would help. It's an older toy. I hope I'm not you know, hurting it too badly. Okay, there we go. I got it closed. And you fold these panels down and extend this little bit along here. And this is his steam engine mode. Now, obviously for the classics update of the toy, it was changed to a bullet train. And that was by far the weakest of the modes on that toy. Just because the back half of it looked like a space shuttle. And was barely disguised at all. On this one, the steam engine, they managed to make it work a lot better. It, it's very much a panel former, but they went to all the detail of painting in... Uh, the lines for the uh, drive wheels, they painted in the connecting rods for them. They've got all the... Now, of course, he's only got, actually, uh, four wheels. I just realized one of my wheels is missing. I can't believe I just noticed that. Anyway, he should have four wheels. Mine has three. Haha. -ha. Two back here, and the two that are back here. So, of course, these molded ones are all fakes. But, hey, they pretty much have to be considering the way he transforms. I got a little bit of bending, and this mode for me is where you can see uh, more of the issues with it because you've got this metal bending and it's scratched in some places. And actually, I just noticed a really cool piece of detailing. If you look at the front of his steam engine mode, you can see he, these here, they're just supposed to be like the robot feet thin as they are, but they actually kind of look like a cow catcher that real steam locomotives have. And it's, I'm certain that's unintentional, but it does work out in the thing's favor. Now, obviously, it's got some oddities. First of all, it's got wheels on the top of the cab. That would obviously make no sense on anything. It's got rocket thrusters out the back of it instead of a tender. But hey, I'm all for a rocket-powered steam engine, actually. Though that doesn't really make it a steam engine. Never mind. Anyway. It can't really do much in this mode, which is the unfortunate thing of Astro Train. He's got two vehicle modes. Neither of them have any gimmicks. Whatever. Okay, let's get him onto robot mode. So, we're going to take the panels here, and we're going to fold them back to the way they were in shuttle mode, but leave his shuttle cockpit inside the body. We're going to separate the legs just a little bit, and and do something I'm entirely not supposed to. Older toy, the jointage on this guy is kind of annoying. That's something to be said for the newer toys is the joints for the most part deploy unless they've been badly designed. Take the wings and fold them back into wings. Take the uh, cab up here fold it down along the back and is it supposed to peg in? No, it just kind of sits flat there. Dig out his arms. <laughs> his dinky little arms that don't extend. I wish they did, but they don't. <laughs> and it's kind of a shame. I, I'm told that when he was originally designed, they were supposed to extend, and that got scrapped for some reason, presumably to cut down on production costs. Because uh, producing initial toys can be expensive. And then we take the wing here, and we slide it down just a little bit, and get it to shimmy down, and we open it up just a little bit, and create his sort of wing chest plate. Now, of course, the uh, cartoon's animation model instead just had it folded in on the inside of his body. I prefer to actually have it out like this. It's what... Well, I didn't get the instructions, obviously, because I got this guy loose. But it, otherwise, it makes this detailing serve no purpose. And besides, the animation model was screwed up anyway because it had an additional tail fin sticking out his back for no reason at all. 
But, so yeah, we've got Astro Train. Um, this is why I said that I felt his robot mode was the weakest out of all of them. I mean, he's got a decent head sculpt with some painted eyes, even though my camera really isn't picking it up. And he's got some nice detailing on the fins here, but you've got these really weak floppy legs. And I realize that it's an older toy and it's kind of used, so naturally it's not going to be in the best of shape, but still. The legs look really bad because you've just got this little wee bit here and then this massive stock. But the arms kill it for me. I wish they extended. I really, really wish they extended. But if I pull on this guy too hard, the arms would break. And as much as I'd like to show you guys that fact, I really don't want to break this toy any more than it already is. But apart from that, I mean, it's G1. You gotta let a lot of stuff slide with G1, because they were just starting out. They hadn't really learned the tricks of the trade. There are a lot of pluses for him. I mean, when you consider the fact that they managed to get a robot mode out of him with 80s toy technology, when he has two actual vehicle modes, uh, and let's face it, a lot of the things that get billed as triple changers... One of the modes is just uh, y y you fiddle some parts around a little bit. You end up with something in between the two modes. That's a mode! Fuck you. No, it's not. This guy has two actual vehicle modes. And he has a decent robot mode. And I'd love to set him down, but I can't because then it'll be off camera. But And the uh, classics version, the robot mode is actually middle of the road. It's not quite as weak as the bullet train, but it's not quite as good as the space shuttle. And so that's where I feel the two differ. But this guy's still a very decent toy. I mean, his articulation is jack all. He's got shoulder joints, and that's that's about what mini vehicles had at the time. That's not a hell of a lot. But he does stand up fairly nicely, and you know what? He's a decent toy. If you're a G1 enthusiast, you're going to want to have the triple changers because they were awesome. They were one of the high points of Transformerdom along with, you know, the city bots. The city bots were awesome. Anyway, I don't have a lot of G1 Transformers at this time. If I get some, I'd happily do a review of them, but... So I'm going to do some reviews of other stuff in the meanwhile. If I had to give this guy a rating, hmm, I guess I'd give him a 6 out of 10 by modern standards and an 8 out of 10 by G1 standards. I mean, he's got some problems, and those problems are even worse today, but you know what? He's still a fun toy, and one of the reasons he loses a bit today is because I'm afraid to play with him because of what he's made of but and the way his joints are. But he's a very nice toy, and I would recommend him to any G1 enthusiast, so... In the meanwhile, I'll be back with some more Transformers reviews, I guess, so, uh, peace out.